Kyle Jacobs. Well, hello, Caroline. How are you on this lovely rainy day? I'm good. I mean, it's raining outside, but it's not cold. That's great. You know? It is great. I'm just checking your volumes. I can keep talking. Oh, okay, I'm going to keep talking. Hi, I'm Kyle. Check, check, check. One, two. Check, check, check. Check, check. Check it to check. Check it to check, check, check. So we have a fire going. Right? Yes, with real logs. I know. Because sometimes there's a lot of fake fires these days. There is fake fires. We did have a fake. Oh, what's this thing called? On the mouth. Oh, so You wait. got to make out with that microphone. <laughs> it's going to be weird. <laughs> I don't know who's made out with this microphone. That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Lots of people's lips have been on that microphone. Yeah, that actually including your be, wife's. Oh, well, then that works, and I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, yeah, that used to be a fake fire, but now it's not a fake fire because Kelly wanted a real fire. Go real or go home. That's right. Okay, so I want to start off with a little rapid fire. Okay, go. I'm in. Um, greatest influence on your life. Greatest influence on my life, mm-hmm. like overall. Uh, yeah, just whatever you want that to be. Um, well, there's the big guy upstairs. You know, he's pretty cool. I like him a lot. He's kind of helped things out. You know, have you always been faithful? Yeah. I mean, I grew up in a family that, you know, they always, you know, we went to church and and um, but they also didn't push it on me. I had to kind of figure it out on my own. And uh, um, I am never going to say that I have it all figured out, but um, I definitely am faithful and it's a big part of my life. So what does your faith look like to you in your everyday life? Everyday life? Yeah. Um, Are you just a church on Sundays kind of guy, or is it weaved nope. into every day? Like that's what what's crazy. I don't think church needs to just be on Sunday. Amen. I think it could be any day. Can I get a hallelujah for that? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just, um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a casual Christian. I'm just, I, uh, I just, I love Jesus. That's it. And um, very prayerful. And So you're like kind of in constant prayer? Yeah. Yeah. So when it says pray, pray without ceasing, that's, that's me. Unless I'm sleeping. So right. I'm actually praying for you right now. You are? I am. What are you praying for? Just for your life and for you and Michael and just just for good tidings. Oh, back at you. <laughs> Seriously. That's awesome. I feel the same way. I feel like uh, a switch happened to me at some point where faith didn't become like I used to have a disconnect where it was like living in faith. And I then somewhere they just blurred into one and it was the greatest thing. Yeah, I think that's um, I think that's the trick, you know. I mm-hmm. think that's the key, and you know, whatever religion you choose or faith you choose or whatever, I I just I know what works for me and for my life, and and I've seen I see evidence of it every single day. Give me an example. Well, uh, this is gonna sound kind of weird. No, nope, nothing's gonna shock me. All right. Well, I've got <laughs> this. I got this number that's called I call it my God number. Okay. And I see it every single day, and it's two fifty one. What does that mean? Well, it's just, to me, every time I see it, whether it's on a license plate or it's on the microwave or if it's just a time or I see it in the most random, crazy places. And to me, that's just God just saying, hey, buddy, I'm here. I got you. Do you kind of feel like that's telling you, does it ever show up when you're wondering what to do and show up in a way that leads you? Yes, absolutely. My favorite time that I ever saw it was when um, I was going to propose to Kelly. And we were Rosemary Beach, which Y'all's is the most, place. Yeah, the most beautiful beach in North America, in my opinion. Yes. Um, white sand beaches, and it's gorgeous, and it's awesome. And anyway, so the day I was going to propose to her, uh, the ring was coming that day via FedEx. Okay. So I was freaking out of my mind, you know? Right, because what Just, if it didn't get there? Right, went exactly. Wrong. Yeah. And so anyway, I, I couldn't sleep. I woke up early, and... Um, so it was like 5.30 in the morning, and I went up to the coffee maker, and the time on the coffee maker was wrong. What do you think it said? It said 2.51. She's got full body chills. So then did you just have the most peace ever? It was like the best day ever. After that, were you like, okay, God. Like, yep, okay. I'm cool. It's cool. <sighs> Isn't that nuts? It happens all the time, all the time. How wonderful that you have a sign. Yeah. Do you know wh- why was it 2.51? Like, what started the first one? How did you I know that was God? It j- I don't know. It just happened. Somehow. And then you just started I just, knowing. Well, I just kept seeing it and seeing it and seeing it. And it's like, all right, is someone talking to me? Is, what, what's going on? And I'm not a voodoo guy. I'm not weird. I just, I'm, but I just kept seeing it. And it was just, that to me was just more evidence that, you know, someone's there and someone's talking to me and someone's saying it's okay. I love that. Okay, so I was going to get to your wedding with Kelly, but since you mentioned it, mm-hmm. let's talk about that. Because you said that was like a very spiritual experience for oh, you. the whole thing best day of my life and even meeting kelly y'all met in a songwriting room it was like instant chemistry right away right nope no 
We met in a bar, darling. Y'all didn't meet in a songwriting session? No. All uh-uh. the best love stories start in a bar. Michael and yeah. I met in a bar, too. Was it Tin Roof? <laughs> it was Tin Roof. <laughs> Cheers, high five. That's where we met. Making marriages all over the place. Tin yeah, Roof. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Tin Roof. So ten, if anyone wants to get married, go to Tin Roof. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Just maybe get a few, over, a little bit overserved mm-hmm. and meet your mate. Yeah, make some <laughs> bad decisions. <laughs> that turn out to be awesome. That turn out to be incredible. Yeah. So tell me how y'all met and tell me about your wedding and why it was so spiritual. Well, we literally met at, at the Tin Roof and um, she came walking in with a couple songwriting buddies, uh, okay. Chris Lindsay and Amy Mayo. Oh, yeah. And, right. and they uh, wrote Red High Heels with her. They did. Yep. And they wrote <laughs> I Wonder and they wrote uh, a few other songs with her. Okay. Big songs for her. And um, anyway, she came walking in and I just, it was like I saw an angel. I mean, she's the most beautiful girl on the planet. I mean, you're beautiful I agree. too. No, I agree. She is beautiful and yeah. Amazing inside and out. Yes. And um, anyway, I just could not stop staring at her. And then she, she just happened to walk in with two of my buddies. And I was sitting at that big round table You're in the like, front. Bingo. And I'm like, hey, everybody, why don't you come just sit here? Hey, <laughs> come hang I out. I know you guys. I yeah. <laughs> come join me. So we literally could not stop staring at each other. So it was a, instant love. From across the table. I don't know. It was just instant something. And then the next day, uh, we ended up writing a song. And again, we couldn't stop staring at each other. I knew there was a songwriting session involved. That's that's where it was. So the next yeah. day, y'all just said, "Oh, let's." I, I love that Nashville dating songwriters how they can oh, date. Yeah. They're like, "You meet a cute girl, you meet a cute guy, and you're like, and you're a songwriter in Nashville. You're like, we should write a song together." Hey, let's write a song. Let's write a song. Yeah. AKA, let's yeah. see if we. Have so we chemistry. call it a uh, we call it love at first write. So. Did, what song did I write? Uh, we wrote a song about her ex boyfriend, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Might as well just get it all out there in the beginning. Right? Yeah. I think so. I think so, too. Just be an you know, open book. That's how you do it. I love that. Okay, and then tell the one thing about the wedding where y'all run out in the water and all oh, that. Oh, our wedding. Well, we were planning this huge, huge wedding, and we were doing this TV show along with it, and, and it just got too crazy. It just got nuts. And we were like, what are we doing? You know, I mean, we had, there was like 400 people or something on the list. Oh, and gosh. It was just nuts. It, it, that sounds overwhelming. Yeah, and it, there was so much stress, and it was just it was just kind of killing us. And so we just got to a point where we're like, what is this about? This should be about us and God, and that's it. That's it, right? Right. So we had to, you know, we had to call some family members and a couple friends and stuff and just say, hey, we're doing this a little bit different. And uh, we did. We went to a private island um, in Antigua. And uh, and we got married um, there. We eloped, and it was one of the most beautiful days of my life. And I kind of did something a little crazy. What? Well, um, you know, we didn't s- stay in the same place, you know, the night before and right. stuff. You know, we're trying to be honorable. Right, and right, right. Trying to do that, that thing, right? Yep. So we are g- supposed to get married on the beach, and it's this beautiful beach, white sand, and the water is just crystal blue, and it's amazing. And um, so I get out there first, and I'm staring – at the water and I see this sandbar that stretches out into the water and it's about an- ankle deep water and but it goes out like 150 yards I mean it goes way out there and so I looked at our Antiguan minister who's a beautiful woman and I said what do you think should we try it and she's like oh I don't know I don't, I don't <laughs> know if we should I'm like let's just do it let's do it take your shoes off and let's go so anyway we go out we're probably 100 yards out into the water just standing there waiting for Kelly she comes walking up in her wedding dress, and I'm nervous. I'm like, I hope she this is cool because like <laughs> she's wearing this beautiful wedding dress. And and uh, so she actually gets to the beach and starts looking around. Can't and, find you. Yeah, and she'll tell you. She thinks, like, I was the runaway. Like you left her at the altar. I was the runa- runaway fiancé or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so she's looking around, and then she sees me out in the water, and I see her. And I'm like, uh. Next thing you know, she hikes up her dress and just hauls ass out <laughs> there. Oh my gosh, it was it was so beautiful. I just it was crazy. I so love that. It feels like not only did we get married out in that water, but um we got baptized out there too. I mean Water's it was so just spiritual. It just was it was so crazy beautiful. The thing I love about you and Kelly is y'all are such a power couple and not just in a career way. Because you know, some people are like very strong career people, both of them. Y'all have a really incredible bond, relationship bond. Y'all are I know this from being on the show with you guys. I love Kelly Pickler. I've gotten mm-hmm. to really get to know y'all as a couple. Y'all are just so amazing together. Well, that's so sweet for you to say. It's she's my best friend, you know. And I think I you can p- tell you put it first. In yeah. other words, well, I think you absolutely have to, you mm-hmm. know, and especially in this 
in this business, it gets crazy. It can totally like immediately. Yes. gets crazy. <laughs> and, um, and it's hard. And, and, you know, we spend a lot of time apart, which, which gets really hard too. And, um, so when we're together, we do, I mean, I think my best advice to anybody out there is just to laugh as much as you possibly can with your spouse. I love that. Laugh. Laugh through, that. laugh through this life because there, there's laugh through this life. Hold yeah. on. That's like Oprah says, aha moment, the tweetable moment. Okay. If I had a team, I'd say tweet that team. <laughs> 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 that is such a tweetable moment. But laugh it's, through it's, this Im- life. it's important. You know, it's important because uh, life just brings drama. It just happens. It's going to be there. It's not going to go anywhere. There's no one always, always going to be drama. There's nothing you can do about it. And um, if you can learn how to laugh through it and, um, just smile and and to be able to share that together i mean that's amazing it's amazing yeah (sighs) okay a few more rapid fires um what is your dream come true my dream come true yeah my wife look at oh my god okay besides that that, (laughs) uh dream come true is um wow having a number one with garth brooks you already did that and it was the biggest number one of all times yeah okay so we're gonna talk about that because you wrote a song, More Than a Memory. Yeah. Did you write that with Lee Bryce, too? Yep, Lee and Bryce and Billy Montana. And, oh, I love Billy Montana, too. Yeah, Greatest awesome. guy. Amazing. It debuted at number one on the charts. Yeah. Explain that, because first off, explain the chart situation and how yeah. it takes a song a while to get to number yeah. one. To yeah. come in on the charts at number one, is that the only time it's ever happened in history? It's the first time in the history of country music that a song debuted at number one. And... It changed my life. It changed Lee Bryce's life, Billy Montana's life. And um, it's unfortunate because when you go a uh, number one in the first week, it's all downhill from there. So, <laughs> But at least you got a number one. You made history. Yeah, we did. But um, which we're there very, very thankful for. But generally it takes like, I mean, sometimes it'll take 40, 50 weeks to get a totally. song up the charts. Because a song will come in at like. It doesn't even hit the charts till 60. Is that when the charts even open up? Ish, yeah. So you yeah. Like, it takes forever to get enough momentum to mm-hmm. even hit the charts at 60. And yeah. then we're talking like every week, maybe you can move up one spot. Yep. So sometimes it takes a song a year yeah. to yeah. climb the charts. Yeah. And you produced Lee Rice. His mm-hmm. song was the longest charted song of all times. Love Like Crazy, right? Yeah, Love Like Crazy. Is, we, I always give him crap because, you know, he's got the slowest rising single and the fastest rising Stop single. Stop it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. He, that he had to even it out yeah yeah Yeah. it's all about balance (laughs) yeah (laughs) so he his longest chart was like 56 weeks or something yeah it broke the record i think eddie arnold had the record um so i think it was 54 weeks or something like that i'm not sure exactly but yeah love like crazy was big old hit for lee so but that's how it usually takes it usually takes a long time and that didn't even get up to number one love like crazy didn't nope Mm-mm. Oh, I thought it was a number one for sure. No. Did you produce that? No, that was a uh, uh, so. Mr. Doug Johnson. And then you came in because yeah. now you're producing Lee Rice. Yeah, and we've hit, we've been really lucky. We've we've had hard love and um, drinking class, and I drive your truck. Oh. And, um, and you wrote drinking class. No, I didn't. Just Did you write it. one of those? Uh, drinking class is Josh Keir, Mark Irwin, and um, and yeah, someone else. Someone awesome. Someone else. <laughs> David Frazier. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So and I drive your truck one yeah. song of the year. I know that's that's probably my favorite song I've ever been a part of ever. Yeah. Can you kind of tell the backstory of that? Sure. Song? I'd love to. Um, so it was written by Connie Harrington and Jimmy Eary and uh, Jesse Alexander. And they're all phenomenal songwriters. I mean, they're amazing. But um, Connie Harrington was she was driving into town one day and she was listening to NPR and there's a, a guy being interviewed who actually lost his son in the war, lost him in Af- Afghanistan. And his son went into harm's way multiple times to save uh, a few of his buddies. And he ended up losing his life. And um, so the father was being interviewed. And the interviewer asked the father, what do you do? How do you get through something like this? And the father said, honestly, what I do is I just I get in his truck and I drive. <sighs> I drive. His dog tags are hanging in the rear view, and his old skull cans rolling in the floorboard, and that's how I remember my son. And um, wow! So Connie hears he died wow. saving a friend. Yes, multiple friends, and um, he was a hero. I mean, he was a total hero. And um, so he uh, or Connie hears this story, and she pulls off to the side of the road. She's bawling her eyes out, and says, "I have to write this song today. I have to." 
and she did. And um, it just, it came our way. When you're a producer, you listen to thousands of songs, as you know. Oh, yeah. You listen to thousands of song, j songs just to see what's going to work out for your artist and what's really going to make the record and what's going to be great. And you hear a lot of great songs and you hear some not so great songs. And people are scared of ballads, too, in this yeah. town. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Without Although a doubt. Lee crushes ballads. Yeah. Oh, uh, That's kind of his thing. He but radio is like, don't play a ballad. Yeah. We need upbeat stuff. So to yeah. have a very meaningful ballad like that is sometimes risky, too. It even is though risky. the song's so amazing. Yep. It is risky. But it is, um, it has just, it has impacted our lives in such a deep way and, and, um, we constantly get comments, and Lee does as well, just with people say, you know, I actually, I drive my dad's truck. And he wasn't even in the, in the military. It's just how they remember their father. Or I drive my brother's truck or my sister's truck even. And there's so much, so much stuff that's just, it's been so beautiful. It's amazing what three minutes of a song can do, you know? And then at the number one party, it was so cool because the father who was speaking on NPR was actually located and he showed up at the number one party and yeah. gave a speech. Yeah, that was, I will never forget that. You know how number one parties go. Yes. Like everyone's doing their networking and everybody's talking. Nobody really cares what's going on up, you know, on the stage. On the stage. And, and uh, when he got up there and started talking about his son, it was like you could hear a pin drop. You totally could. I mean, in all honesty, I don't think anybody knows this except for my co-producer, Matt McClure. I, after he spoke, I... I ran off stage and uh, I, I lost it. I lost it. And um, it just was, it's just such an impactful song. And um, my wife and I, we, you know, we get to do USO tours, which is one of my favorite things on the planet to do. Tell me about those because you yeah. just got back for one. Tell me why you love it so much because how many have y'all done now? Well, Kelly, uh, this, is, this was her 11th and this was my 8th. Tell me why you love USO tours so much. It is, it's just our favorite thing to do. We love our troops. We love them. And they're, they're out there just working their butts off. They're working so hard just to protect us and to protect our freedoms. And, and uh, they're going through so much. And What's it like over there? When you go over there, what are you experiencing? Well, it's just, um, you get just a little snippet of what they go through on a daily basis. So give me an example. Well, just the example is just, you know, <laughs> flying military. You're flying 14 hours over to Iraq. And you're flying in a C-17, which is super loud, and there's cargo everywhere, and it's definitely not the most comfortable thing in the world. It's not first class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not even, it's not even economy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know. So that's, you know, that's a tiny little snippet. And then you go over there, and you see, um, man, you see these kids who are 18 to however old, um, digging holes in the ground to sleep in. Digging holes in the ground to sleep in. Why? Well, because the base isn't quite ready yet, and they have to. They're s building up the base, and they're they're preparing it for more troops to come in, and and they literally are digging holes in the ground to sleep in. And then there's a the fear of mortars. You have mortars. You have bad guys. You have camel spiders. You don't want to see one of those. Those are bad. But there's just there's so there's so much that they go through on a daily basis. But when we do these shows, there's Pixie. Pixie's it here. Oh yeah. When we do these shows, it's. We get to go on stage and, and just love on them. Just give them a break from really what they're going through, which can get mundane a lot. And homesickness um, too. Homesickness and, and just give them a little a little piece of home, you know, just just and just a little break and, and make them smile and, and So they don't feel like they're just on this island by themselves. Exactly. Too. Exactly. Like they're they're not just anything that we can do to make them feel like they're not alone and that they're appreciated for what they're doing. So the so. first time you went, was it just you knew this was something that was going to be a part of your life and your married life together? Did y'all just know? Well, the first time we went was actually right after we got married. Really? Yeah, we are. We had an extended honeymoon in Iraq. <laughs> that <laughs> is crazy. so awesome, and that it is was, so y'all. It was. That's exactly what happened. We got home uh, here in Nashville just for a day, and then we went straight to Baghdad. So, and that was my first experience, and. Um, what a way to start your marriage too. It was awesome. What a bonding experience yeah. to experience something so real with oh, yeah. your spouse. Yeah, it was really, really, really awesome. And that was that was Kelly's third, my first. So, um, I mean, I made my dis you know decision like I, I will do this for the rest of my life if I possibly can if if they're giving us the opportunity. Do you ever get afraid? No. Never. Mm -mm. Yeah. 
It's real over there. I mean, mortars can real. hit a base at any yeah. time. We were just we were just in a hard spot in Iraq, and there was a there was a road that we went down, which was one of the most IED roads, which are the bombs that you know blow up on the ground, and and um, it was a little it was a little tricky. And um, Kelly's actually been mortared before. She has. Uh huh. Yep. She got th- thrown out of her barracks when she was sleeping, and uh, and uh, <laughs> they had to cover her up and make sure everything was cool and. It does get a little sketchy, but um, like I said, these guys, they guys and girls, they deal with it every single day. And if they can do it for 18 months at a time, it's sometimes longer, why can't we go out and do it for a week? I love that. Yeah. I love that, too, about you and Kelly, and I think that's another reason why I think y'all's marriage is so great, is you guys are all about giving back and helping and using your platform to mm-hmm. make the world better in the best way that you can. Like, I feel like that is a cause of, of you guys, both of y'all. Y'all Thank love you. to improve your friend's life. You love to improve the world where, wherever you can. Like, y'all, that's, a, that's a, something I feel like you guys do intentionally. Well, I think everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody's been given a gift to do something. And um, and I think we all, you know, can just ha- have a mission to give back and, um, and pay it forward in a lot of ways. And um, if we don't, then we're not, we're not treating that gift the way um, we should be. We're not honoring that gift. Where did that mentality come from? Uh, just, For both of y'all. I th- I don't know. It just. Um, I mean, my parents taught me well. My my dad, and my mom, I love them. And they just moved to Nashville. They did. How is it having the parents here? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You love it? No, it's cool. It's really cool. Are they coming over for dinner every night? No, not every night. No, they don't live down the road. They live about 30 minutes away. So That's a good distance. So when they're coming, they're they're calling beforehand so we can, you know, clean up things and, and make sure the house is in order. And that was fun. You had a little, one of the episodes on I Love Kelly Pickler last season was making duck calls with your parents. Yeah, your dad. my dad. Oh, my, my dad is awesome. I Tell mean, me about your dad. He just, he's, he's a woodworker and he actually learned it from my grandpa uh, who passed this year, um, but... He is um, there. I mean, they're both just incredible people. And they my grandpa worked at Caterpillar and my dad worked at John Deere, which was kind of funny because they were competing. (laughs) And um, but they both just ended up falling in love, falling in love with uh, turning wood. So my dad makes the most beautiful bowls and and duck calls and pens and ice cream scoops. And just like he's amazing. Do you woodwork? I do. Yeah. Nice. I made that. This this uh, swing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You made this whole swing. Yeah, Kelly wanted a porch swing when we got the house. Okay, so this is a beautiful swing. It's Dang. very deep set yeah. and long, cozy, and it doesn't like overswing too. Which no, it's like the perfect rope. You don't want the overswing with a swing. Right? You don't want the overswing. You with don't a swing. want the overswing. You want the, it's the perfect amount of swing. That's right. Yep. You could even like sleep on that. Oh yeah, that's happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah so what brought you to nashville and what Hmm. made kyle jacobs wake up and say i'm gonna be a hit songwriter and producer um well (coughs) i moved here actually to be an artist um you moved oh oh i I saw your album cover oh no i have seen it and you look good Uh, you got got that model stare down just don't say anything about the album title (laughs) it's a little weird what's the album title (laughs) nothing spit it so small so small yeah Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> it was a big idea at the time, but now I've gotten so much crap from my friends. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> it just means you're so small in the scope of life, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I re- recorded it in Colorado, and that's where the title came from because I'm seeing all these mountains and stuff, and I was feeling so small. And well, so Carrie Underwood had a huge hit called "So Small." See? Yeah. Right? It's not that bad of an idea. I like it. Yeah. Well, I moved here to be a Christian artist because okay. um, I was a really big fish. In a very small pond in Minnesota. Were you the hot? Oh, I was the thing. Stuff? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I was working that church circuit. Oh, uh, I was rocking that thing. All the choir girls loving you. Woo! <laughs> oh yeah. Singing soprano, extra high for you. Uh huh. <laughs> it was my mom. <laughs> um, no, it was. Um, that was cool. And then I, I just, um, you know, this is Music City, USA. Mm-hmm. So, I moved down here and and to be a uh, Christian artist. To be a Christian artist and um, met with a lot of record labels and stuff like that and just kind of just kind of realized that that kind of wasn't going to be my thing okay. as far as that industry goes. And I saw um, the life of a successful songwriter, and um, I didn't realize you could make a living just as a songwriter. I had, that. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. And 
I saw his life and saw what he was doing. And I was like, all right. Was there someone in particular you were it was, looking it up was to? It was pretty much Wayne Kirkpatrick. Okay. Um, now tell me about him. Who's well, he's done guy? a lot in the Christian industry. He's done a lot with Little Big Town. He's just, um, he's a songwriter and producer and artist. I mean, he's amazing. Was he kind of like your mentor? Um, in some ways. He worked a lot with Michael W. Smith, who was okay. um, a big mentor for me growing up. And Michael W. Smith was mm-hmm. a mentor for you? Huge. He's like the biggest Christian artist of all time. Yeah, he was huge. How'd you link up with him? Um, well, I didn't really link up with him. I just, he was, I kind of tried to, tried to, uh, be like him him. and emulate him. And I totally looked up to him. Um, but again, you know, I just, I saw the lives of successful songwriters. I was like, well, okay, I'm going to try that. Just see what happens. So, um, just started writing songs casually while I had pretty much every job on the planet. What Uh, what are some of your jobs? (coughs) My first job in, in Nashville was, uh, sweeping up styrofoam peanuts. Perfect. Yeah, at a Where? styrofoam peanut packing company. How do you even get that job? Uh, it was through a temp agency. Okay. It's weird. <laughs> okay. It just happened. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> uh, painted houses. I'd, I'd drive to Atlanta and paint houses and sleep in my car and, and then come back to Nashville and try and write some songs, go back out to Atlanta and did that a lot. And, um, I, uh, I had a lot of jobs. But anyway, somehow, some way, I wrote a song um, called Aether Wonder that <gasps> – uh, Kimberly Locke, Kimberly American Locke. Idol. Yep. So you're very linked in to American Idol. It's crazy <laughs> how it always keeps coming back up into my life. <laughs> it's it's nuts. You're going to have to tell me all the other American Idol links. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few of them. So Eighth World Wonder. Yeah. I remember when that came out. And that yeah. was Christian. No. That, that was not Christian. That was pop. But it feels like it has a good underlying message. Yeah. Yeah, I try to do that all the time. Well, I did write a song called D-Ronk the other day. but Called what? D-Ronk. D-Ronk? Yeah. What does that mean? Drunk. Oh. <laughs> hey, sometimes you can find God in the craziest place. Whiskey and God, they go right. together a lot. I met my wife in a bar. Hey. Okay. Yep. Um, anyway, so you that's. You write that as a song. That song just kind of started things off. It did really well on the pop charts. And And she was, that was when she was hot off it American It was her first Idol. single. It was her first single. That was her first mm-hmm. single. Yep. Yep. Didn't and she get like third or something? Uh, she did really well. I'm not well. sure what she did. I think it was like third or fourth, something like that. But she did. I mean, it was awesome. It, it you know, that also changed my life because it paid off all my debt. And, um, and it proved that you could be a hit songwriter. You it, could do this. It did. It did. The crazy thing is, is after I finished writing the song at a TGI Fridays, I looked at my co-writer. I'm like, dude, this song is horrible. You wrote it at TGI Fridays? Uh, finished it at TGI Fridays. Yeah, drinking a beer. <laughs> There's alcohol again. Always. I mean, it just keeps coming Got back. Got to. Why do uh, you think it was terrible? Well, I, we just finished the lyric, and I still don't know what it means. I still, to this day, don't know what it means. Well, doesn't it mean that, like, you're the greatest? There's seven world winners, and you're the eighth, so that yeah, means you Yeah, but what is seven days and seven nights of thunder, water's rising, and I'm slipping under? I think I fell in love with the eighth world wonder. What is that means that you just fell in love with the great, like, it's as huge and as notable as the other seven wonders of the world. Okay, I'll take that. Right? I'll just run with that. I mean, that's what I thought it meant. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so. Maybe the lyrics just flew out. They yeah. were just meant to be. Uh, yeah. And to start with a happened. pop hit, that's pretty solid. It was pretty crazy. And so she happened to be on Curb Records. And then that got me my deal with Curb Publishing, which I've had for 12 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so is that how you met up with Lee Bryce? How did you link up with him? Because that's he's a big part of your story. Yeah, that's exactly how I met Lee, um, through Curb Publishing. Because he signed to Curb Records yep. as an artist. Yep, and he was signed uh, right before I got there. And um, so we ended up writing a song together, and he liked my pop influence, and I liked his country influence. And all of a sudden, it just kind of meshed together. And now we've probably written, I don't know, maybe 200 songs together. And y'all have like a true brotherhood, too. We do, Yeah. He's my boy. I mean, do you know who's the first person I ever fell in love with in Nashville? He who? didn't love me back. Oh, you loved him? And my f- the first song I ever wrote was called "So Over You." It's about Lee Bryce. <laughs> oh wow! He didn't know that I had a big crush. He probably knew I had a crush on. Did you play it for him? Oh, it was the funniest thing ever. Okay, so when I was in Stealing Angels, mm-hmm. we were playing a show with Lee Bryce, and by this time I had gotten way over it. I was so young, I didn't know that sometimes guys like to date a lot of girls at one time. Oh yeah, it happens. You know when you're just casually dating. Yeah. I thought if you're dating, you might just be in a relationship. That's mm-hmm. I was very young. Mm. I didn't have much experience dating. Yeah. So I thought Lee and I were like dating. <laughs> And then for, we weren't. And so I wrote this song called <laughs> So Over You. <laughs> it's called I'm So Over Hoping It's Your Name Every Time a Cell Phone Rings. You say you will, but you never do. You never seem to follow through. It's really hilarious. I like it. We pulled him up on stage. And 
I sang it to him on stage. Like and you sat him down and you yeah, sang it to him? Yeah, because we were singing a show together. Mm-hmm. And it was funny at this point because now I'm lovely. He's like, I, he's yeah. a friend, thinks he's awesome. Yeah, sang it to him on stage and he just laughed. It was. That's amazing. It was a funny moment. Yeah, That's he was fun. my first heartbreak in Nashville. Hmm. First Heartbreak in Nashville. Yeah. That could be a song title right there. Totally. Heartbreak in Nashville. Heart, there's a lot of those happening. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Let's write that. Okay. Yeah. I kind of retired from writing songs. So oh, you, you didn't? write it, and then I'll pitch it and get it cut. Boom. Okay. Done. Awesome. Great. Teamwork. Yep. Boom. <laughs> so, do you prefer writing hits or producing, or is it like children, you can't pick your favorite? It's, it's both. I love both. I mean, um, you're more attached to something you write than just something you produce. But yeah. then there's a song like I Drive Your Truck, which I didn't write, but I did produce, and it's like my heart and soul. Totally. So it's it's a little tricky. It's just, I love I love doing both. It's it's awesome, you know, spending three hours and writing a song. I wrote one last night with my beautiful wife, Kelly, and it is so intimate and so fun and so cool. And yet there's something amazing about having this awesome song going into the studio and seeing it come to life. True that, because when you write a song on a guitar or a piano or however, it's very rough, very stripped down. And then you go in the studio and it's like you bring this thing Mm -hmm. into the it's into life. Oh, yeah. And it's amazing because you go a million different directions, too. Oh, you absolutely can. And that's, you know, that's one trick about producing. You got to try and figure that out. Do you try a lot of different ways when you're producing? Um, We do what's called pre-production. So you just... um, you try and just figure out, all right, this song is about this, and it needs to feel like this. Um, there's multiple options you can do it, but let's try this. You know, we'll, let's try this guitar part real quick, or let's let's try this musical hook, or you know, try something. And um, that's why pre-production is so important. Okay. It's very, very important that's because when you it, figure out the sound. It saves a lot of time in the studio as well, time and money. So, um, but what's what I love too is and I remember the first time it ever happened to me. I wrote a song with. A uh, girl named Melissa Pierce. Do you remember Melissa Pierce? Yeah. Yeah. So my first studio experience with Nashville mu- musicians was a song that we wrote. It was called Devil in the Deep Blue Sea. And um, it's amazing because I didn't know that you could just play this rough track that you recorded on your phone and play it for pretty much the best musicians on the planet here in Nashville. Right? Right. Right. And um, all of a sudden... They're in there and they're just destroying. It. I mean, they're killing like it. One and it's take. amazing. I know one take and, it, and it's just like, wow, that was like a huge highlight in my life. Just like, wow, that just happened. And um, now that's, you know, about a thousand songs later. But I know um, and now you're used to it. It's crazy yeah, yeah. what we can get used to in Nashville. Yeah. 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 And it's it's amazing when I have family come here who hasn't been here and they see the studio experience and they're just, you know, wide eyed and just boggled, you know, just blown away. It is. It's yeah. unreal. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So tell me about being a TV star. Did you ever know that you were going to be such a TV star? I mean, you have the face. You got the look. You you know, you know the back, we got the model pictures to prove it, too. Oh, gosh. So small. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There it is. It's not going to stop. I'm going to have that for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was a bad decision. <laughs> no, it was perfect. <laughs> Have you enjoyed reality TV? Because obviously you and your wife, Kelly, are on the hit show, I Love Kelly Pickler. Yeah. Came out, first season, highest day viewing show in years. It's so great. Y'all have been so nice to let me be on a few episodes mm-hmm. with y'all. Love it. It's been such a fun time. But and you kill it every time. Thanks. Well, it's so being with you guys is always a blast. Yeah. Has it been fun becoming a TV star? It's been interesting. I mean, if you would have asked me a couple years ago, I'd be like, what? <laughs> no. And there's no way that's going to happen. Um but, you know, Ryan Seacrest approached us and and um, and there was we put this plan in place. And um, it's funny, we get interviewed a lot um, with people. And the, one of the most common questions is why? Why would you do a reality show? Why would you do that to your marriage? It seems like your marriage is great. Why would you do that? And for us, it's just like, hey, this our marriage is great and our marriage is number one. If a show ever gets in the place or gets in the way of our marriage. Show's going by. Show's going Mm bye-bye. Done. And that's okay. And, um, but also, you know, we really talked about it because there's there's some networks and stuff that really wanted us to throw the drama in there and and to fight. And there's one network that wanted us to have a kid in the first season. Oh, God. Yeah, they're like, we'll do your show if you guys have a kid. 
Well, like a kid shouldn't be a bartering point, yeah, right? I know. <laughs> like it's that's like, a big deal. Son, you were born because of our TV show, and da da da. I mean, it was horrible. So we're like, no, no, we're not going to do that. But Ryan was really cool because we sat down and we talked and we just said, listen, if we're going to do something, we're going to. And this needs to be about love and laughter, and that's it. Love and laughter because the world needs it. You know, I agree. They need it. And there's so much drama on TV and all this stuff. And that's just not us. You know, that's not us. So and plus, we just wanted to do it with our best buddies. And it's been a, and Kyle and Andy are Ken and Andy. Oh, yeah. Kyle and Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Ken and Andy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, are y'all's and very and best Jen couple and friends. Me and Jen. Yeah, and I know Jen Allison. And and Dave and Dave. Allison. Yeah. And it's just it's kind of it's really been cool. It's been like this video scrapbook that we all get to look back on and remember those good times. And I love it. I have loved every second of it. It's been fun. And the thing I love about you and Kelly is she's hilarious. Yep. Like you, especially when when a camera, the things she says Mm -hmm. are absolutely they just make your stomach hurt. You're laughing so hard. Oh yeah. But you, your personality. With hers, it's such a dynamic pair because y'all balance each other out in such a way, and you're so funny in your own way well. that y'all are such a good team. It's like I don't know how to describe it, but honestly, it is like I love Lucy a little bit, Ricky Ricardo and uh, I Lucille guess, Ball. Yeah, it kind of is a little bit, yeah. It's kind of the same, not not the same, but the same kind of fun, yeah, great dynamic. Because Lucy was always getting herself into situations <laughs> he had to always, always get her out, and he's yeah. always like Lucy, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's yeah. so fun. But thank you. It's been it's been a blast. It's been so much fun. We're v- very blessed to be doing it, and um, yeah, and we'll we'll see what happens in the future with it. You know, went to Japan. Yes, we did. Was that amazing? Incredible. It was awesome. <gasps> we stayed with this like? beautiful family, um, Taka and Kanuka, and um, I can't really remember or pronounce their daughters' <laughs> names, but um, yeah, Tokyo was was. Amazing. It makes New York City look like a small town. Really? It's huge. What was it like living with an actual family and getting that like intimate experience of like feeling like a local? Yeah, it was different. I mean, it's just, it's nothing like America, you know, at all. And they sleep on the floor. I mean, that's. Really? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. They don't have like elevated beds. They have the little like futon thing. Why? I wonder. I don't know. Just everything there is about how they can conserve space. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because everything is kind of packed in. Okay. So um, I think you just, you know, when you go to bed at night, you roll the bed out and you sleep on it. And then you push it up in the morning. You wake up, you push it up in the morning, you have room to do whatever else. Hmm. Yeah. Effective. Yeah. Very much so. But um, yeah, it's huge. And we got to do some fun things. Like Kelly did um, a geisha thing. Oh, yeah. Which she put this geisha outfit on. And oh, my gosh. Like, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh. She looks so beautiful. <laughs> I got to do a ninja class. You are a ninja. That, well, that's fitting. A lot, of pe- a lot of people say that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people do. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that's a common th- theme in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just what was it like becoming a ninja? Well, not becoming, but just continuing to be. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. C- yeah. Continuing we, 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 what you already were, yeah. right. Uh-huh. Well, it was cool. I had to, you know, it was, I mean, there was actual ninjas there and, you know, I had to teach them a couple things. I know. That's you know. probably nice of you to be so generous yeah. with your skills. Yeah. You know, there's some American ninja stuff. Like, right. They don't know about. Totally. Yeah. So, no, it was cool. It was super cool. We got to do like throwing stars and blow darts and um, they taught me like, like this cool stuff. And um, anyway, I got some party tricks. I'll show you later. Okay. I'm ninja ready. party tricks. Oh. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think to yourself, like, what is this life? How cool mm, is this life? Yeah, I do a lot. Um, my dad and mom bring it up all the time. They're they like, do? And they're getting used to it now where they're just like, where I'll be like, all right, I'm going to Iraq over Christmas. We'll see you later. I'm <laughs> <laughs> going to Tokyo. Yeah, or going to Tokyo or doing this or doing Producing that. Producing Lee Rice's yeah. song of the year. Or um, writing Kelly's theme song to mm. um, CMT. What's it called? Crazy? Uh Ain't, Ain't no, no cure, cure for, for crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, per- perfect it's, theme it's song. True. You wrote and produced that. <coughs> I did. Funny story. She actually called um, from the, she was doing Dancing with the Stars, which she won. Which is uh, also crazy. Which is crazy. Um, that is hard. Yeah. Dancing with the Stars is for real. That's and you legit. sang a song that she danced to on there. I did. Yep. Yep. I got to sing a song for my wife while she was dancing with some other dude. Once again. <laughs> I know. Too bad. And Derek is so good looking. Hey. <laughs> You're much more good looking. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and a better dancer. Oh, totally. Right? You've seen it. Was that hard having her dance with this very attractive guy? Do we have to talk about this right now? <laughs> I mean, he's so I feel like I just healed. <laughs> 
He is so cute. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, really, no. It's honest. Just how you know, cool I mean, to play this to play though with her. That was she, that was amazing. It was it was really really nerve wracking. I've never played live. Oh my gosh! In front of forty million people before. Um, oh my. God, that's how many people tune into that? Oh, it was crazy. It was nuts. It was way, way up there. And I thought, actually, when I showed up for dress rehearsal, I thought I was playing with a band. So I wouldn't have to really worry about my playing so much, and I could just sing the song. And uh, I, I show up at dress rehearsal, and I'm, I sit on a stool, and I have my guitar, and I look behind me, and there's nobody. You're like, oh, hey. I'm like, wait, is everybody at lunch? Where's what's, everybody? What's going <laughs> kind on? Kind of a big deal here. Everyone needs to be here. And they're like, all right, go ahead. I'm like. What? So that I was had cool no that idea. It was an intimate moment like that, though. It was, and um, it was really sweet because it was, um, it was, what was it? It was uh, she needed to pick a song from her favorite year, and it was the year we got married, and that's that's our wedding song. So. Aww. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it was really sweet. Once again, look how intertwined your lives all, yeah. always are, which I love. I love how y'all figure out a way to always keep them intertwined. Yeah. You know? I think that's what we, what you need to do. I think so. If you ever start leaving your spouse out, Mm-mm. then that's where a great divide can happen. Yeah. The only time with, uh, we're ever not really together is when Minnesota is playing Carolina football, and mm. uh, that's that's House bad. Divided. We're pretty much divorced for three hours. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. It's good to have a little fighting. Yeah. Healthy a little fighting. Bit. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Why totally. Not? Mm-hmm. Totally. Totally. Okay, so what are you looking forward to for 2017? It's the start of a new year. Oh, gosh. Um, I'm just looking for, wow, new adventures, whatever they are. Anything on the bucket list for this year? Oh, man. Well, first of all, just spending as much time as possible with my wife, um, seeing what happens with the show. Um, and uh, I want to write the best songs I've ever written. Um, yes. And... Um, you know, Which is gonna be hard because you've written some great songs. Thank you very much. But um, I, uh, Kelly, and I are looking at doing a record here pretty soon. Together. Mm-hmm. <gasps> yeah. I'm Yay. gonna produce my wife, which might get a little tricky. Oh, y'all can. But the good good news is, y'all are so honest with each other. Yeah, we'll be fine. <clears throat> oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we have that on the docket, and um, I'm really excited about Lee Bryce's new record. Um, we're gonna be done. Well, probably gonna have a single out um, early March. Heck, yes. Do you yeah. know what it is? I've got a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Do you, are you in love with this record? Crazy about it. Yeah, it's been great. I love making music with Lee. Love it. He's such a soulful soulful singer, yeah. too. He's just this big country hunting, fishing dude. And But, man, if he doesn't have a big heart. Mm-hmm. I could see why he was your first heartbreak. <laughs> He knows it too. <laughs> mm. Yeah. He, well, he's so charming and so talented. He is. And so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. they just have a baby? Um, they have two boys, and they are now. It just came out that uh, they're pregnant again. Oh, so so awesome. we don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but see what's up. See what's I up. I think he needs a little girl. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. Girls are good for boys. Break them down a little uh-huh. bit. Uh huh. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so I think I covered everything I want to talk about. Okay. <coughs> um. Well, actually, you do have something called United Teens Encounter Christ. Is that something you're still doing? Oh, when I stalked you, you find that I stalk people. I stalk you. I stalked you. What else do you know about me? Um, uh, let's see. That was way back in the day. That's when I was in high school. Yeah, that was like a church group thing that I used to do. Okay. That's actually one thing that really kind of helped me out musically where we would do these weekends with these kids, um, junior high, high school kids, and I would lead music for them. And it was amazing. It was awesome. Okay, I didn't know if that was something you're still pursuing that you wanted to talk about and share. Oh, I don't even know if it's still going on. I have no well, idea. Well, if you research and stalk like me, Kyle, then yeah. you can. I'll, I oh, find I'm, all gonna, the I'm about to stalk you. <laughs> yep, you're getting oh stalked. God. Oh, God. No, don't, don't, don't. I think I can find something. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the worst, most embarrassing thing of my life was going on, worst slash best, uh, family feud oh, with you guys. Oh, let's talk about that. Hey, no, let me interview you. Oh, so, God. do you remember, Caroline, when you were on Family Feud? Oh, vividly. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> now, tell me why that was such a, a traumatic experience for you. Okay. Well, I was the last person to answer because I was like, it was you, it was Kelly, you, and then Kelly's sister, brother in law, me. Mm-hmm. And so that's number five, I guess. Yeah. And what was the question? So by the time the question got to me, which was, what can only your man do to your behind? All the safe answers were gone. Like they were <laughs> out of there. <laughs> so I was 
trying to be politically correct. And I was like, well, if you're married, you can do the dirty from behind. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yep. You said that. You said that. And the whole world heard it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was that was probably the most embarrassed, b- embarrassing moment I've ever had in my life because it was so public. But it was hilarious. And it was funny. Hey, it was benign. It was fine. I thought y'all were going to kill me. I was like, oh, my God. Kelly and Kyle are taking me on this show. And now I'm going to humiliate them and their family. Well, but you <laughs> said, you said, well, I, I, I don't think I should say it. <laughs> but, well. Well. I mean, you tried. I you tried. tried not to say it. But. Oh, my God. You did say it. I did. It's out there. Yeah. It's kind of great just to get that stuff out there. Because then you so don't too. have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. It's like, I'm a human. Whatever. Everybody was thinking it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That was so fun. That yeah, was, was a fun. blast. Steve Harvey's awesome. And then y'all went on his show. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. are y'all like couple friends with him and I think it's Marjorie. I follow her on Instagram. Uh, no, <laughs> but I'd like to be. I know. He's awesome. He's the coolest guy. He's so cool. And he gives kind of like sermons. Well, not sermons, but like messages in between. What was it, What's that one? The jump? You have to take the jump. Yeah. What, what, what did he say? I think it was jump. Yeah. Yeah. Like take that jump. Don't yeah. be scared. Don't be scared. Follow your passion. Yep. It's God's work. Absolutely. So I like to wrap up with leave your light. Sure. Leave some inspiration of how you would like to inspire people or how you have been inspired. Oh, gosh. Wow. That's a tricky one. It can just be from your heart. Don't, you don't have to like overthink it. I would say first thing that's come to my mind is be nothing than yourself. Just, yes. Just be yourself. Um, it's sometimes hard to do is. that. Yeah. And especially in an industry like this or wherever you are, um, it's hard to, number one, just figure out yourself. It takes a while. Yeah. So it's that whole know thyself and be thyself. And um, I think that's one thing I love about my wife is that she knows who she is. Mm-hmm. And she's the only person that she's going to be is her. And that. that's inspired me. And because um, I can I can definitely be a chameleon and morph into different things and it's easy to do that i feel like i can also yeah and then you end up losing yourself Mm -hmm. so just be yourself love yourself and uh laugh through this life amen to that (laughs) thanks for joining me kyle thanks caroline you're the best you're the best